So I, I work with GAN and as a service provider, uh, social services, uh, we deal with a lot of gun violence, homicides, we deal with uh, a lot of suicides, different things like that. Uh, I'm not the average guy uh, come up here and show you a bunch of NRA material, I, I, I don't even fool the NRA like that. Um, but I am one of those uh, very rare um, gunfighters out here that look at it more from a cognitive uh, perspective. Uh, more from psychology and sociology. I, I really um, push that because also often is overlooked. Mental health. A lot of people who own firearms, they are in need of mental health services. It's just what it is. Um, there's no way of getting around that. Uh, a lot of times people who own firearms because of the ego, especially male, they don't want to go out and get these services because for them it make them feel like, hey, you know, I'm less than or I'm supposed to be a macho man or whatever the case may be. But um, that is why I do what I do. So let's get started here. This thing is acting right. And please excuse the computer. So let's get it down a little bit. Okay, so when we're working with guns, a lot of people look at it and say, well, it may or may not be as safe as you think it is. And it's really not. Um, let me bring the screen back up for you. It's kind of off. Um, we'll go through the cardinal safety rules of always keep the gun pointed in the safe direction, keep the finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot, uh, different things like that. And that's okay, but it doesn't really explain to ordinary people what that means. They'll say something very simple like keep the gun pointed down range. Well, what's down range in your home? There is no down range. There is no trap. There is no steel that's going to catch that round. You see what I'm saying? When we're working in close proximity, the neighborhoods are cut the way they're cut, the landscape is, the house may be, you know, less than five feet away from you. I know in Baltimore, they have a lot of row houses where, you know, they're stacked up. So there is no gap in between. So a round pass through the wall, hit somebody else on the other side, we're in trouble. So it's okay to say point it down range or have it safe in this direction, but what relatively is safe? What is that? And it's something to think about because what's safe for you right now may not be safe for me, you know, five minutes from now. Especially if we have children running around, okay? Um, and when I say that there's nothing safe about owning a gun, I mean, you can look at this thing here, you know, lead exposure, unintentional discharge. If someone gets struck, you have psychological damage, physiological damage, structural damage, a strain on social relationships. You know, a lot of times when people fire a gun, even in self-defense, unless they're right, a lot of times people don't want to be associated with that individual. Sometimes your children may suffer because their friends' parents may say, hey, this guy, I don't know, I hang around him, he got guns in the home, she got guns in the home, I don't want you to play with, you know, Jimmy Todd or whatever the case may be anymore. Um, it exposes, it does expose children to danger, it's potential. Whether we like to admit it or not, I mean, I can go out here and spout a bunch of things about how safe guns are, but I'd be lying to you if I couldn't argue the negative. You see what I'm saying? Increased risk of suicide. Sometimes it's up to three and five times the amount. It is so easy, to, it's easier to press the trigger than it is to cut your own wrist. People figure that, hey, it'll be quicker. You see what I'm saying? Increased risk of death, improper storage, and that is a big thing. A lot of times people, you store firearms, right? I'm a single guy, so I'm going to store mine different than, let's say, a, a single mother of three kids. Especially if you have the kids that are in teenage years, uh, they get kind of fascinated by firearms, they see it in the movies or the cartoons or whatever they're watching, and they say, hey, I want to see what this is about, and they may pick it up or even take it out of a storage compartment that you put it in, you know, to, uh, how you say, experiment or to mess around. Uh, and, it, and of course, it can make you cognitively biased on the political side, on the social side, it happens. You hear a lot now about people's guns being stolen out of their vehicle. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's my other thing. Sometimes they will say, if the state, for the state of North Carolina, they say it's okay to store the firearm in a locked vehicle because it counts as a locking device. I say if you can help it, don't do it, especially overnight. If you're going to, let's say, to pick your children up from the school, you got to go inside, of course, you have to lock it in your car. No problem, right? But if you're going long period of time um, away from your car, overnight, camping trips, don't do it. Because people like you will say, we'll break into your car, steal your stuff, and then you'll find it up north being sold illegally for five times the price. I mean, that's just what it is. All right? And I'm not going to go through these uh, statistics, but I just want you to take a look at it because 
this is what's going on in the community, it's a reflection of what's going on in the society period. Um, risk of homicide, three times higher in homes with firearms. I mean, we cannot escape that reality. Estimated 41% of gun-related homicides, 94% of gun-related suicides would not occur under the same circumstances had no guns been present. See, it's okay to say, I'm going to go out here, I'm going to get this done, and I'm going to have it for my personal protection, but a lot of times we neglect things like this. We don't think about it. Because maybe you've been a victim of past crime, you never know. Another slide. Seven times in uh, criminal assaults and homicides and four times in unintentional shooting deaths or injuries. And a lot of times this happens when people are just simply cleaning their guns. And it does, it's not just limited to ordinary common folks. This is military personnel. This is police personnel. People who've been in the gun game 20 years that lose a certain respect that they have for the gun and once did and they wind up shooting themselves in the foot or something like that trying to, how you say, uh, clean their firearm for whatever reason. Okay, so we can say follow these three safety rules, but in the end of the day, you are the safety. These are inanimate objects. They're like, you know, can openers. Can opener doesn't work until you start picking it up and do what you got to do with it. Chef knives don't work until you start picking up and start cutting. Same thing with guns. They don't fire until they come into your hands to do whatever you need it to do, intentionally or unintentionally. So I would always recommend for people in the community, right, Always seek the training opportunities. Know how to properly manipulate that weapon if you have one, if you plan on buying one. Get into it prior to you making that purchase. Know when the gun is safe and when it's not. Sometimes people will rely on the safety, the external safety of the gun, and they're saying, hey, okay, I put the safety on, I should be good. And then sometimes you can't because the safety is a mechanical device that can what? Fail. Okay, so we don't rely on those particular things. Know the federal and state and local law. That is always important because sometimes people will say, okay, I'm living in Charlotte, Mecklenburg, I'm in, you know, Indiana, uh, whatever, Chicago, and I'm going to only focus on these laws. But they forget when they cross that state line, this is a totally different set of laws. So from like one of my clients, Shani Allen, right, she got locked up in New Jersey. She got a, a pardon from the governor there. She only got in trouble with that because she crossed the state lines, even though she was legally allowed to carry in Philadelphia. She went cross line state Jersey. Hey, she's looking at getting ready to do three years for illegal possession of a firearm, and we're talking about less than three miles from the border. On her way to a family get together. You see what I'm saying? So things change. Keep abreast of continuous training opportunities, know when and when not to press the trigger. Know and use the right ammunition for the right gun. Sometimes you walk up to someone and say, hey, What kind of gun you got? Like, ah, nine mil. Oh, my favorite. I got a 380. Right? But they don't tell the difference between the 380 ACP and the 380 Auto, mm -hmm. which are two separate cartridges. Or they may say, hey, I got a Makarov, a 9x18, and they'll go buy some 9x19 bullets. Put the wrong bullets into the wrong gun, and then you got a hazard. Recipe for disaster, right? And always have a proper ear and eye protection on the shooting range. You'll see some people uh, try to use uh, their beats headsets on the range, like, don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm serious, like it happens. It really does. Okay, again, it's your job to, again, know the range rules where you're shooting. Always know who and what is in your shooting environment as much as possible. This is really going into self-defense. I don't want to get in too much into that, but I do want to make notion of that because a lot of times, you know, people get caught up in the heat in a moment. You know, robbery or something like that, and they start shooting. But they forget that, hey, there's someone's child over there. You see what I'm saying? Or there's a potentially person that may be deaf or hard of hearing here who could not hear that commotion or someone who was blind who didn't see anything at all. And you're blasting away and now you may have hit that suspect or whatever but now you have caused a bigger uh, tobacco and you struck someone else. Um, when you're done shooting, wash your hands, cold water and soap, lead exposure. That's just what it is. You're firing, discharge, get lead on the hands, it happens. That's what it is. Okay? If on a range call a ceasefire, if you see something that makes you feel unsafe, if you even have a malfunction and you don't know how to clear the malfunction with the firearm, uh, you'll see it it's go on YouTube, you see some of the craziest things. Guys will be firing the gun and so for armed reason it doesn't work or whatever. And they'll turn around in the barrel and say, Bob, what happened to my gun here? It happens, like people do these kind of things. And these are not people who are new, these are people who, again, 15, 20, 30 years into the gun game here. Make sure you have the right equipment and the solution needed to clean it. 
and uh, do not have ammunition around when you're clean, cleaning your gun. I would always recommend that. It uh, happens all the time. People say, I thought it was clear. Nah, you're out. We talked about this already, so we don't got to go through that. Okay, a lot of people say, only point the gun at what you want to destroy. Well, I'm going to tell you to take it a step further, only for designated targets and bad guys. Sometimes, again, people get uh, unintentional discharge, they happen. Now, here's the big one, especially for women. They say, I would love to own a firearm because I've been in trouble, a uh, couple break-ins, maybe I'm a victim of sexual assault or rape or something like that. But however, I have children in home and I don't feel comfortable. Well, I will always tell you, take your children to the classes with you. Did you know the tough snipers in the military and the police and people who shoot like I do, been shooting since they were like five years old? Go out with the father on the hunting trips and the father is showing them different things. And this is how you get those special forces guys. And you get guys like me on the street. Alright? So, women, if you're here, you have guns, take your, ch your children to the classes with you. So they can also get that education. So they can also learn a certain respect. It demystifies the process of the gun. Think about it. The only reason people rap about guns is because they can't have them. You can't rap about water. <laughs> You drink water, you take it for granted, like, okay, it's a cup of water. Big deal. But for people who don't know any better, this is what they do. You see what I'm saying? So, take them with you. They're more likely to practice proper handling of firearms. If they, even if you're in an environment, you don't even know a gun's there, because your children have that knowledge, they will let you know, like, hey, listen, there's a gun over there. Hey, listen, can you get someone to help fix the situation? Possibly they, with their friends, they can save their friend's life because they have a knowledge base that their friend may not have. They friend may bring the gun to school, mess around with it, and the boy or the, or the doctor may say to your friend, say, hey, listen, hey, that ain't how you do it. Get somebody, call the police, do something right for a change. So it's a certain maturity level that comes along with working with your children and working with them on the range. And plus it's a bonding experience. Stories and carry. There's a little bit of debate about it here. Because sometimes they will say, hey, listen, store the ammunition separate from the gun. And you can. But most people don't buy guns for hunting, especially in an urban environment. Most people buy guns for self-defense. That's the problem. Go to sleep at night, 3 o'clock in the morning, someone breaking your home. You got the ammunition and the gun separate. Now you fumbling around. You can't really... I mean, you ever wake up in the morning and go try to take a pee? You know, you can't see nothing. Okay? I mean, like, I'm blind. Okay, I can't see anything. So imagine having to do that under stress, can't see, you got people breaking in your house, and now you're loading the gun, now you have a recipe for disaster. Right, so what I would recommend for people is, if you're going to store that gun, especially with semis, the semi is the real issue here. Because they will look at the semi, and they will think that the chamber is clear. Here's my semi here, right? So for me, I'm actually clear now. There's nothing there. But some people will do the following. And they will drop the mat, but they will forget that it's one here. That is the issue. With the revolver, it's a little bit different because the cylinder, you have to take it out. You have to swing it out. And then you have to take that ammunition out. So when you're going to store, then you would have to definitely store that revolver with the um, cylinder latch open or with that ammunition separate. So it is a very different kind of mindset depending on the weapon system that you own. You have to always be cognizant of those things. If you're going to store a revolver with rounds in the cylinder or not, be sure to check the cylinder when you pick it up again. Like when I pick up this gun, even though I know physically that there's a round here, there's a magazine here, and the action is open, when I pick it up, I'm still going to check. Habitually checking these guns. All, this, all the time. And that is what a lot of people do not do. Even people who have been in the gun game 20 years, they'll sit down and say, alright, I'm good. And they don't even check it. So if something happens or something doesn't happen or they're going to store this gun, they don't know the condition on the weapon system. So when they pick it up, accident. I had a youth once who shot with his own genitals. Yeah, trying to do it in the picnic's carry. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. And these kind of things happen all the time, um, more often than you think. Um, if you're going to store the gun, ensure that it's under lock and key so unauthorized, uh, in this case, children, especially children and bad guys don't get it, you know what I mean? Uh, do not store the guns in your car, I, I don't know how to keep saying that. Uh, and ladies, don't store it in your purse, okay? I, I know, hear me out. 
I understand you have the, the dresses on, all right? And you don't want to have the bulging, and I, I got that, all right? And you may want to put it in there. If you can help it, don't do it, okay? Um, why? Especially when you got the big Chanel process, you know, the one that you do the champagne with when you go buy it, that one. You put it in there, and sometimes women will put a round into the chamber for mm -hmm. a semi, and even for the, uh, uh, for the revolver. But when they start fumbling around, reaching in that purse, finger goes on the trigger, press, then you got a round going off for a discharge. So that's why I say don't keep it in your purse, all right? Um, unless you're going to keep it, if you're going to carry, carry. Some people say, I don't like to carry with one in the chamber, in a conditioned tree. That's okay. Fine. But if you're going to carry one in the chamber, be cognitive of that. And uh, make sure you have a good holster. When you buy a gun, make sure you buy a good holster. But a lot of times people buy a gun, don't buy no holster at all, but I'm good. No. All right. And do not soak the rounds in oil or use any petroleum products on the bullets. Don't do that. It like, messes everything up. It's not a good look. Once you send the round out, you can't take it back. It's like baking. Okay. You put too much flour or something, you can't even get it out. You put too much water in my biscuits here, I'm not, one, I ain't gonna eat them. All right? <laughs> and two, you can't get the water out. Okay? So that's not gonna be a problem. So be sure to shot before you take it. Know your line of fire. Know what may be in front and behind that target. Consider how many people around you will react when you discharge that gun. Because I tell you, a lot of times when you're firing out in public for self defense, people will run into your line of fire because they're just trying to get out, especially children. They don't know. Five years old, rounds going off, bad guy, people around, they're going to hug on you for their life because they don't know what's going on. So those are things you must consider. Consider those legal ramifications. Every time you fire a round, there is an attorney attached to every single round. I don't care who you are, police included. Okay? Consider how you may feel in the aftermath, emotionally and psychologically. Because you may say, yeah, I'm gay. Yeah, you go get them. And then you find out you can't handle with taking the life of another human being. And put you at risk of alcoholism, suicide, and everything else is under the tree, right? And consider again that social risk. How will people see you once you fire this gun? For me, I fire a gun and convict in a heartbeat, no problem. But when I did that, guess what? When I went to walk my dog, everyone across in the street. Doesn't make me feel good. Even though I'm in the ride, I'm like, come on, I was saving your life. Nah, it's all right, boss. You know what I mean? So it happens all the time. All right? Think about it. Now, they're going to typically, I already show you, keep it like this. When you pick up a firearm, keep it along the frame, the finger. A lot of times you'll see people, they'll pick up a gun for whatever reason. They say, yeah, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. you, 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 they do it. You, do, you, you go to the gun store, you see it. You see it, but what that what that should let you know is that maybe this person maybe have a lapse of cognition, or they were not properly trained, or they didn't have any training at all. So that is something to think about. So when you pick it up, just like this, very simple. Okay. And we should be wrapping up soon. Drugs, alcohol. Do I have to say it? It don't mix. Like I mean, this is self-explanatory. But you'll see people. With the FIF fifth and the firearm drinking and shooting. You see it, you know, backyard in the country in the rural area, that's what they do. That's what grandpa did, so I do. You see, so don't do it. And even on New Year's or holidays, don't do it. Don't, yeah. do, it. Yeah. Yeah. don't yeah. do it. Now here's a funny thing in the state here from North Carolina. Law recently changed. Like I can go to the bar, I can sit at the bar with my gun, right? But I cannot have one drop of alcohol in the system. I can't have it. So if you see someone out there with a gun, you still need to throw them drops back like that. Hey, let somebody know. Because at the end of the night, it could be you they firing at. Or it could be someone else. You may save a life. You never know. You may save their life. Because maybe they're going to alcoholism and suicide. You never know. And the last slide here. What is it? Know your federal, state, and local. I can't emphasize this enough. People buy things, they don't read, for whatever reason, you know, the old saying in the old joke in the office is you can have a bulletin board and you can put like everything on the bulletin board and people will walk past that thing and they come to your office and say, hey, do you, you know about XYZ? Can you tell me about XYZ? And like, it's on the bulletin board. They'll never read it. And the same thing with the law. They, I don't know what it is about reading, comprehension, and guns. I, I, 
Read, okay? It'll save your life. It'll save you jail. It'll save you. It'll save you, okay? Read. So that's about it. And um, if there's any questions, I will take them. And uh, I have a question. Yes. So do you mean if I live in North Carolina, if I'm going to South Carolina, I shouldn't carry a gun with me? You can. Because North, North Carolina and South Carolina have a relationship called reciprocity, right? Mm -hmm. And so my concealed carry is good there. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the kicker. In this state, we have an open carry. Which means I can walk down the street, my gun's showing. But as soon as I cross that border, I better have that concealed carry. I better have it. Or at least it better be concealed if you're going to, you know, ride the fine line. And be, being able to just carry, you know, here, you can carry a gun and show it. What did you, what did you call it? Open carry? It's one? open carry. And if somebody is mentally unstable, or, uh, I mean, they start shooting. That's my concern. Well, you know, there's there's no way to really know who's mentally unstable unless you're just a uh, how you say a professional in the field. You've seen certain um, pathologies before, and so you can call it, right? Like, hey, that person, I don't know, but this person's all right. You're the professional, you know. Uh, for the average person, they don't know nothing. They don't know anything to the shots are coming out. So if you're gonna carry open carry, if, if that's your question, if you're gonna carry carry, it's okay. Uh, but don't be alarmed by the person standing next to you in Walmart. <laughs> and open carry, because you may see me in there open carry, right? Maybe on my leg or something. I don't know. Don't get alarmed. In fact, I would ask you, I would urge you to ask questions. Like, hey, how does that work? And you'll be very surprised. They'll love to tell you. Everyone has a story. Question? Good? Okay. Thank you.